Hi, everybody. Um, welcome to our Facebook Live. And um, I am here with you. And I'm really excited about what we're going to be talking about today. Um, let me play a little, a little clip for you. I had the very, very wonderful privilege of being the featured guest on Dave Asprey's Bulletproof Radio. And we talked all about peptides. And um, he has, he, if you don't know who he is, he has been in the integrative space for a really long time. He's written multiple books. They're all awesome. He's the inventor of the Bulletproof Coffee System. And his new book is called Superhuman. And he has coined the term or, or created the term biohacking in learning how to you actually reverse the aging process using a lot of different, all different modalities. And he's been a very long time podcaster and um, he's an influencer. He's just a, he's a fantastic person and it was a really, really great experience. And so I'm going to share some of that with you. Um, some of the things we talked about and then some of the experience. Um, let me play for you an audio clip here um, that uh, from our interview. I love the term zombie cells. Um, <laughs> if you have zombie cells, they're not serving your, you anymore. When the 5-amino-1-MQ not only improves cellular energy, but it's also flipping that switch to either take a cell that is sickly and get it back to a normal functioning cell or allow the autophagy to happen. But interestingly about this peptide is when you take it, you feel really good. You notice less body pain, more focus, more energy, um, wow. your own physical capability is, is better. Bulletproof Radio, a state of high performance. You're listening to Bulletproof Radio with Dave Asprey. So wasn't that great? So that was the, the little piece just to give you an idea of, um, of what we're talking about here. And I'm going to give you a, um, a uh, I'm going to tell you a link uh, at the end here that you can go and listen to the whole thing. It's, it, it, it's really, um, you know, he is just an amazing. And we talked a lot about peptides. So Dave has been using peptides for quite some time. He, um, he is very knowledgeable about peptides. And we talked about some of his favorite peptides that I had mentioned, and uh, I talked a lot about peptides last Friday. And it's one of my favorite subjects. And, um, so we, some of the peptides that he, he was very familiar with the thymusins and just to remember, me remind you what the thymus, the thymus and alpha one and the thymus and beta four thymus and peptides are just incredible. They were isolated or, originally thymus and beta four, especially was isolated from calf thymus years and years ago and known for its incredible properties to help heal and regulate inflammation and get the immune system, the T cell mediated immune system, which is our immune system essentially is, is composed of all, all these different cells and they kind of categorize into B cells and T cells and how our body manages in infectious agents will usually go down one of those two main departments. And the T cell mediated immunity is um, when we say T, we mean the letter T, T cells. That's often involved in the autoimmune process. When I say autoimmune you know, diseases like Hashimoto's thyroiditis, ulcerative colitis, Crohn's disease is autoimmune, MS is autoimmune. There's a lot of pretty well-known dis, you know, disorders that can are, that are, fall into the autoimmune category, but there's a lot that are an, have an autoimmune component that maybe haven't had a name yet. There's you know, these kind of mixed autoimmune diseases and where there's multiple different um, symptoms or signs, but maybe not falling into exactly one category that's already been diagnosed. There's a lot of ways that our immune system can be what we call dysregulated, where it's not working properly. The thymusins are exceptionally good at helping our immune system to work properly, to get that regulation back under control, as well as helping our T cells, which are um, really, really important in viruses, to you know, crank up the numbers and let them mature so that they can actually help us fight viral infections. So um, we talked quite a bit about the thymusins. Uh, Dave uses the thymusins. He's a big fan. 
we talked about BPC-157, which uh, you may remember I talked about last week, one of my favorite peptides. BPC is just incredible. A lot of people will use BPC, you know, injecting it under the skin, but injecting it over an area that is painful or needs repair, and they can get some really, really nice results with that. Um, it's It has so many different ways that it works and so many different systems in the body that it works in and it's super super safe it's one of one of the ones that's kind of exciting there's peptides that um he he'll men he mentions uh, a cortef peptide which mimics our own cortisol it hits the receptors that our own cortisol does and cortisol often gets a bad name we need cortisol cortisol is a hormone and it's it's often called the hormone of life without cortisol we don't survive we have to have cortisol but it's supposed to work in a very specific fashion it's not supposed to be present all the time and we you know cortisol can if it's depleted then there's a lot of functions in our body that don't work properly so there's a peptide that can mimic that to help raise our body's adrenal function and and, and our ability to have our hormones working properly for a temporary period of time there's um we talked about Epitalin, which is one of my favorite peptides. Um, the epitalin is uh, one of the peptides that has multiple different functions. Probably it's most well known for lengthening telomeres. And I talked about that last Friday, but um, there was a protocol that was initially where you use large dose every day for seven days and doing that once a year. <clears throat> now there's been a lot more study and a lot more ways of using epitalin that's come out over the last few years and Dave and I talk about that too. So Dave is a New York Times bestselling author. His new book, Superhuman, is amazing. It's really, really, it's such a good read and it's not written for doctors. He, you know, his, he has a lot of doctors that listen to his radio show and, um, and follow him, but his, his main presentation is, is for everybody and he's so good at taking some very technical subjects and explaining them and sharing them and all the history behind that um, in his books and in his show so i'm going to play one more clip for you this is um dave this is another clip from the interview and then we'll talk a little bit more about it now speaking of hacking it today's guest knows a thing or two about hacking the human body. She's a board certified anesthesiologist and fellow trained interventional pain medicine physician. And she graduated in the first ever class of physicians trained and certified in peptide medicine. And if you don't know what peptides are, you need to go out and buy your copy of Superhuman. Peptides are these small protein fragments that are changing the face of anti-aging. See what I did there? That was awesome, changing the face of anti-aging. Come on, somebody laugh. Anyway. I had to say it. Uh, anyhow, I'm talking about uh, Dr. Heather Smith Fernandez, who's the founder of the Regenerative Institute of Medicine in Naples, Florida. And she created something called peptology, which is a study and clinical application of peptides in living beings, both human and non human. And I consider her to be one of the go to experts on peptides because she's using them throughout her practice regenerative treatments, advanced aesthetics sexual health, hormone therapy, preventive medicine, all that kind of stuff that is motherhood and apple pie to me. So let me just say a couple of things about what he said already. Um, that is true. So um, the uh, American Association of Anti-Aging Medicine or A4M uh, started a fellowship program in peptide medicine. And I've been using peptides for years when it was we had very limited availability uh, it was very hard to find them and um, because there just wasn't a lot known about it and, and they're very difficult to make. There's only a few places really in the world that actually make them, that sequence them and then do all of the stability testing and actually produce the peptides. Um, that we, now we're not talking about the mainstream ones like insulin. We're talking about all of these newer ones that we've been talking about like epitalin and <clears throat> LL37 and some of these other peptides that are not part of mainstream yet. So my hope is that someday peptides will be very much part of mainstream because they're incredibly effective. They're just, they, what they're able to do for you is take that wellness or that 
um, longevity and take it really to the next level. And um, they're so well understood. We know how they work in the body and they're working inside the cell. So that communication between the mitochondria, which is like the battery, the energy um, producing and, and a lot of other things, but just to you know, think about, well, where, does our, where do we get our energy from? We get our energy from mitochondria and the relationship between the mitochondria and the nucleus where certain genes are being expressed and certain genes are not being expressed uh, is just, you know, that's just incredible. If you think about the depth of what we can learn about how to optimize our health by utilizing that relationship and helping, you know, and understanding that communication that's happening. And then when something isn't right with that communication, why are we making proteins or not making proteins or not expressing certain genes that we should be? It's just fascinating. Not to get too nerdy. <laughs> Those of you who know me know that I get very nerdy very fast. So um, I'll try not to do that. But um, so I was part of the first ever class. As soon as we had any kind of conferences, about peptides, I would drive or fly to wherever I needed to, to learn. And we had this fellowship that became available. I was probably the first name signed up for it. And it was a year long fellowship. And at the end, we graduated with our fellowship in peptide medicine. And that was in December of 2018. And um, they have since graduated another class, but there's, there's still not enough of us out there. And um, so where I met Dave was, um, was speaking at a 4M about peptides. I was on the stage. I had, you know, I don't know how many hundreds of people in the audience and he was there. So I'm going to go ahead and play the rest, some more of this clip. So Heather, welcome to the show. Thank you so much. Hi, Dave. You also do bioidentical hormone replacement, which is something that changed my life when I was 26. It was about 20 years ago for me uh, because I had less... <laughs> Less ester, no, less testosterone and more ester than my mom when I was 26. <laughs> oh, yes. My hormones were yeah. seriously broken. Yes. Uh, so I, I believe that that really helped to change the trajectory of my health and my life and my brain and everything else. And so that's something that already is cutting edge. But now you're all into peptides, which are super like bleeding edge. What made you go from doing things like uh, uh, hormones into this highly specialized, but really just a couple year old area of science? Well, I think that um, like, like you and like a lot of people who are really committed to um, thinking about health a different way than what we've been doing in this country for a while, really doing preventative medicine and what you're doing is utterly revolutionary. I, um, I was kept awake at night by the patients that didn't get better from my regenerative procedures. You have two patients next to each other with the same problem, whether it was a knee or a back or a shoulder, and relatively same age, same activity level, and a couple times they would have markedly different outcomes. And that just sent me down, that's what sent me down the pathway of learning about hormones. Because when I started really digging into the research, the patients that did better with every kind of regenerative procedure were patients that were hormone optimized. So I'm going to stop it there for a second so I can talk to you about that. So um, most of you, I think all of you know that I am also hormone certified and, and that gives you a little background as to why, why would I go from a regenerative practice and helping people with their pain into hormones and that's exactly why. So the best analogy I can give you on this is if let's say you're baking a homemade recipe, okay, homemade recipe of uh, something delicious. I don't know, beef stroganoff. And it's your homemade recipe. You make it, you use exactly the same ingredients, you're using exactly the same oven temperature, and half the time, or more than half the time, let's say 80% of the time, it comes out really, really good. And then 20% of the time, it, you know, it just doesn't, it doesn't do a good job. Like it doesn't taste good, it doesn't look good. And you're wondering, I, mean, I use the same ingredients, the same oven, the same everything, and why doesn't this, why didn't this have come out the same way that it's supposed to and that it does 80 to 90% of the time? And now people are obviously much more complicated than ingredients for a recipe. But the point is 
that that really, um, it was extremely troublesome to me. I want everybody to get a good outcome. And I want to know that I have honed my techniques to, to make for the best outcomes. And then when we would have just some people that just weren't getting the outcomes, that's when I said, there's got to be something that's, that's, why are they not making new tissue? Why are they not able to get past you know, this inflammatory, they're a big inflammatory mess. Why is that? What's going on with that? And it really prompted me in my big nerdy brain <laughs> to go and learn it. And, and there's so much to learn. There's so much to know and, um, and ways that we can improve outcomes for our patients when we start opening the doors a little bit and, and, um, and learning about these things. So I'm going to play the rest of the clip. And um, once I got that's so why I said I need to learn about this. And I did that in about 2012, I was fully certified in hormone medicine and applying that to my regenerative practice. But I was also searching for when we target a tissue, how can we make the PRP or the cellular preparation, whatever we're putting into that tissue, how can we maximize the healing effect? And the first peptide I worked with was IGF-1. And as... Um, so I, I just want to say what IGF-1 is. Insulin-like growth factor one, and I mentioned this last time, I don't think I talked about it that much. So growth hormone, which is you know one of our most amazing hormones that we make, and it is something that we make throughout our life. Um, we just are, we don't secrete, we don't release as much growth hormone as we get older as what our tissues would like for us to release. Our, our tissues want us to have regular amounts of growth hormone the way we did in our 20s and 30s. That's what makes them repair themselves and, and, and maintain better integrity throughout our life. But um, growth hormone gets metabolized, at, you know, when it's, it circulates, it does its business and it gets metabolized. And some of those metabolites are active. And IGF-1 is one of those things we can test in a lab also because its half-life is a lot longer. We, it's easier to test a blood level of IGF-1 than try to get a level of growth hormone that pulses out and then gets metabolized. And just, you know, it's very hard to capture growth hormone itself. IGF-1 is a very stable product that we can actually test in a lab, but it's also highly proliferative. It's incredible how it'll hit those receptors to help tissue start regenerating. There's a whole cascade that happens in our tissues when there's repair and there's regeneration that needs to happen. And IGF-1 is like throwing kerosene on that process. It can really amplify your healing response. Come back to me. Some of your listeners, and you may know, IGF-1 is an active metabolite of growth hormone and it's highly prolific. And when it's, it can also wake up progenitor cells to get them to start helping in the healing process. And, and of course, somorelin was one of the early peptides that when patients had their growth hormone levels more optimized, they just did better. And then they felt better and they had all of these incidental improvements aside from what procedure I had done to their joint or their spine. And it was, it was just a love story that started right from there with me and peptides. And I went and learned from every person I could possibly learn from. So the idea of IGF-1 or insulin-like growth factor, it makes cells grow, fa grow faster as well. It's kind of described, so does insulin, by the way, because insulin makes cells grow faster. That's why bodybuilders used to go slam a bunch of sugar after lifting weights to raise their insulin so they could put on more mass and get swole <laughs> uh, despite the downside. And then sermorelin is a way of raising growth hormone without injecting the stuff that's $1,000 a vial to inject. Right. So you are basically modifying the growth rate of tissue so people would recover faster yes. and doing it with these tiny little protein fragments. How do we know that they work? Like how do we discover all these different peptides? So the, to hear the rest of that, you'll want to go to the interview and um, I'll give you that link in just a minute. So, um, so be, spending that time with Dave was just awesome. Dave um, actually, uh, he, he invented the Bulletproof Coffee. And if you don't know what that is, I'll probably do a, a, a whole Facebook Live about Bulletproof Coffee and the Bulletproof Plan because it's been so incredibly successful for so many people um, to not only lose fat, but to 
really feed their brain, um, allow them to concentrate and think better and have better memory and uh, so many, so many things that you can actually look at all these metrics of aging. Um, and even if you're not looking at the actual metrics, because we have metrics that we look at that includes telomere length and a bunch of other things. But if you think about the, um, the non-technical metrics, things like the memory slipping a little bit and things like you know, the muscle mass not staying there and, you know, things like getting injuries and all these uh, other things that are obvious when we start having that process that's going on to be able to try to make things work better for you and understanding what the body kind of needs to be a more of a long distance runner than just a sprinter. Um, I'm using that metaphorically, not, I don't want everybody to be a long distance runner. Um, but what your body needs to be able to go in a healthy state for a longer period of time. Um, Bulletproof coffee is really, really neat. And, and Dave's books are really, really good. And um, he talks about a, a lot of different um, aspects in superhuman about what things we can do, what things he's actually done. He tells his own personal story, which is incredible. He's, he has an incredible personal journey that he is very open and shares. And um, it, he basically says, if I can do this, and if I was able to make such a huge difference from where I started, I can help anybody to do it. So, so we talk about all kinds of different peptides. Um, I'm going to give you a link now to the rest of the interview. It's drheather.net slash bulletproof interview. That's drheather.net slash bulletproof b-u-l-l-e-t-p-r-o-o-f interview and you'll be able to see the whole um the whole interview and for those of you who um didn't see it last time and were interested in my peptology guide which is basically um i took some of the most common conditions that people in experience um, whether it's memory loss or it's inflammation or pain. And I put at least one peptide that we use regularly that is very successful at treating that. So that's drheather.net slash peptology guide. And you can, it's a free gift for you. You can take a look at it and you can probably see why I'm so excited about peptides when you see all the different things that peptides can help us with. And, and I use them for everything uh, when it comes to <clears throat> different parts of the of my practice different areas of, of health and wellness and um and helping treat conditions so um and peptology is it, it is my trademark set of protocols and i do teach other doctors how to do that and i've developed these protocols over years of research personal experience and, and clinical experience. Um, so it, they're, it's, it's very exciting. And the interview with Dave has a whole lot of extra stuff in it too. We talk a little bit about um, COVID-19. We talk a little bit about a travel pack that if you were traveling to a country where they may have some kind of a bad virus situation, whether it's this one or something else, what's in your travel pack? And, um, and it's, a, it's, a, it's a really neat conversation. And I hope that you go and listen to it and I hope you enjoy it. So I'm going to see if there's um, any any quick you know questions. No, nope, we don't have any quick questions today. So that's drheather.net slash bulletproof interview for the, to see the rest of the interview. And um, and I have more with Dave that you'll be if you're following on this that I'll be able to. We had an, another uh, situation that we did together that I would I'm really looking forward to sharing with you as well. But this is um, and his book Superhuman is fantastic. They have it on audiobook as well. And um, I will plan to see you next time. Oh, and it's drheather.net for, for doctors who are interested in peptology. It's drheather.net slash I'm sorry, I don't have this off the top of my head. Um, I will get it for you, I apologize. Let me see if I can find it. Um, okay, we're gonna put it in the chat for you. 
and um, and so it's it's drheather.net slash peptology guide for those of you that are looking for that peptology guide and for physicians it's um, I'll get it for you here I'm sorry, I, I had it written down and it got all smeared. Um, oh. Okay. Nope, that's not where I'm sorry. Okay, uh, hopefully we'll be able to get it into the chat for you then. Um, I know, there we go, I've got it now. Peptology protocol. <laughs> I apologize. It's drheather.net slash peptology protocol. And and that's one of the one of the it's one of the peptides in the in the protocol that I use in the way that I use it um, for physicians. And then if you're interested in doing the peptology course, obviously you, you you're welcome to do that. And I love sharing um, every every information about peptides. I like talking about peptides. And if you all would like to hear more about specific peptides then I'm happy to talk about them. Um, I talk about mostly the ones that are used most commonly, but we have some really exciting peptides. Um, for example, let me tell you about a new one. Um, ARA290 is a peptide that's, that was specifically shown to have tremendous improvement for nerve pain. I mean, nerve pain, as you know or can imagine, is a very, very difficult thing to deal with, to get better, uh, it, it's, it can be just life-changing. And there's a peptide called ARA290, which has been studied specifically with nerve pain and had tremendous results and tremendous success. There's a couple different ways of youth using that peptide as well. So that's just an, another peptide in this huge world of, of peptides that's very, very exciting. So um, until next Friday, and I hope you all have a wonderful weekend and we'll be here next Friday and stay safe and stay well.